Greetings, friends. There's nothing conservative about Ben Shapiro and Charlie Kirk. Liberals have been saying that the right is eating itself, but they are completely mistaken. What's happening is that the true right wing is seriously hassling the fake right wing. It would be more accurate to say that the right wing is starting to purge itself, ideologically, of liberal cancer. The ideological war is being led by Nick Fuentes and his groypers. They've been doing a very good job. They'll probably be eliminated before long, so enjoy the show while it lasts. I assume that once Nick gets to a certain level of subscribers on his YouTube channel, America First, then it'll all be taken down. Meanwhile, Groypers won't be allowed to ask any more questions at public events where neocons are speaking. But the Groyper mission has been accomplished. The seed has been planted in the minds of the youth. The neocons are sweating, they're squirming, they don't know what to do other than smear their opponents, mischaracterize them, and shut them down however they can. I see no need to elaborate on their detestable behavior. If you've been watching any of the recent events hosted by Turning Point USA or Young America's Foundation, you'll see what I mean. These guys are sponsored by big money, and they want to make money. Okay, another one they like, that I'm a grifter, right, that I make money. Welcome to America. We have lots of sponsors. I'm very grateful for my sponsors. And I'm not going to apologize for the fact that I offer my sponsors a way to reach my audience. I'm very proud of them. I think their products are good. That's why I talk about them. And if it makes me money at the same time, great. I'm out to make money. I like money. Congratulations. It's a free market economy. Yes, Ben. Everyone needs to make money. But that doesn't mean money is our main goal, as you suggest. You're not a stockbroker. You're a political intellectual. Socrates would have scorned you as a sophist, since the sophists sold their teaching for money. Ben Shapiro is a major influence on how people think. Most people in his position would at least pay lip service to something along the lines of spreading truth, doing good, helping your people. But no, not Ben. A brief slip of honesty reveals that this is not an honest man. Now, when it comes to the man at the center of all this, Nick Fuentes, I wish him well. I find him funny, intelligent, and well-spoken. Most important, his message is always on point. At the same time, if I ever became a big fish on YouTube, and I never will, I'm just an insignificant little channel, but if that were ever to happen, I don't think there's any chance Nick Fuentes would uh, want to associate with me. The same way Nick Fuentes has no desire to associate with Royce Lopez and Mike Sheila from Revenge of the Sis. And I'll advocate for the white race. I'll advocate for Christianity and conservative values. But I don't think I would be welcome in the Groyper movement, even though I basically agree with their message. I'm too much of a marginal character to fit in with either normie conservatives or even with edgy Zoomers. But that's a story for another video. So what has all the fuss been about? Well, the Groypers have been asking Charlie Kirk, and to a lesser extent Dan Crenshaw, some very inconvenient questions. Questions which they refuse to answer. Ben Shapiro has not been questioned by the Groypers directly, but he recently gave a speech in which he preempted these questions in his typically slimy, hypocritical fashion. Effectively, Shapiro took on Nick Fuentes without naming him. Naming Nick Fuentes would only give him more followers. There are three principal issues which people like Charlie Kirk, Dan Crenshaw, Matt Walsh, and Ben Shapiro don't want you to question. If you question these things, then you are alt-right, or in Ben Shapiro's words, you are masturbating in your parents' basement. Yes, they regularly employ ad hominems in front of the crowds. You are not allowed to question the following. U.S. financial support for Israel. There are several billion dollars that the United States gives to Israel every year. And there's all sorts of silly arguments that justify this spending, like they support monotheistic religions, that they allow for liberal values. There's some argument, well, it's like, well, you get the money back because they use it to reinvest and buy U.S. bonds. 
They make more money, actually. <laughs> you know, they pour the money back into the U.S. economy, but in a way that benefits uh, a certain group of people. So, <laughs> so there's all sorts of silly arguments they can come up with. They'll call you an anti-Semite for questioning this or or bring, bringing this up. Dan Crenshaw himself said, "Well, is there an ethno-nationalist in the crowd? I, I know where you guys are coming from. You know, he's speaking very uh, uh, condescendingly, very disparagingly." And there's a funny meme of how Dan Crenshaw is the uh, the rebirth of uh, John McCain, <laughs> because you know John McCain he was uh, he went to war, so he, now he gets to make other people go to war. And so Dan Crenshaw lost his eye fighting in the Middle East, and so now he can advocate for other young men to go and have a chance for the same thing to happen to them. So you can't question the huge, enormous financial support for Israel. I mean, it's like, fine, we can send money there. The question is not like, it's not a statement that you should not send this money or that Israelis are bad people or it's nothing like that. It, it's just as it's just a question of perspective. Why is all this money going there? Why not to domestic issues, the border, developing the economy at home? The second issue which you are not allowed to question is legal immigration and related to this, the disappearance of white people, demographically speaking. They're very slippery. They, they always respond by saying, well, you know, of course we have to have border control and we can't have people jumping in front of line and not going through the proper paperwork. And this is totally skipping the question because it is legal immigration. Ill illegal immigration is a problem and that's enough of a problem. But the assumption that legal immigration is all right leads to and is leading to and will continue to lead to the disappearance of white people. And then they say, well, I mean, if you're if they're pushed on that, then they'll say, why are you? What is white? Ben Shapiro, he was saying lots of white people are liberals. What does that even mean, like w white people? I mean, this is stupid. I mean, of course, white people vote all over the spectrum. But I mean, it's totally denying the reality that race and culture tend to go together to some extent. They tend to go together. And yes, of course, there's gray areas. There's murky boundaries. And I'd like to do a video in the future discussing uh, E. Michael Jones, because I agree with a lot of E. Michael Jones, what he has to say. But then E. Michael Jones doesn't really believe in race. He thinks there shouldn't even be an idea of white people. But that's, I don't want to get off topic there. But it's, it's tying into this whole thing that a lot of these neocons, they try to question, well, what are you even trying? And, and you know, it's so disingenuous. It's just very disingenuous. We're talking about the culture, the values. A people has a historic land which they inhabit and there are blood ties for that land. And, and this applies all around the world. So what are white people? What about what are Israeli people? What are Jewish people? What are Chinese people? If you replaced Chinese, if you re replaced China, and this would be impossible, but theoretically, if you deported all the Chinese people out of China, you, uh, I don't know, you, you ship them to Antarctica or something, or you ship them to South America, and you, you filled that land of China with, I don't know, Arabians. Who among us honestly thinks that those Arabians are now going to become Chinese? Is it magic soil? Does that make you uh, the nationality or the ethnicity of the land in which you inhabit? So when computers look at genetic data, at the genome, on their own, like sorting data into natural uh, groups, they sort the data into about seven races. So the computers acting on their own will recognize race because there are real genetic cluster groups around the world. And that, that forms a matrix with ethnicity, which is, you know, culture, historical traditions. A lot of that has to do with uh, religion, too. So legal immigration is a big issue. And you're not allowed to question the fact that one group is being displaced. And you honestly expect this to, to go peacefully without it being addressed? No, it's going gonna, it's gonna to cause huge problems. It already is causing problems. There's crime rates, welfare, spending. I mean, not all of the groups you know, score equally when it comes to crime, when it comes to welfare us usage. Some groups win out, other groups lose. The next issue that you are not allowed to question, you know, I briefly touched on this. You're not allowed to question the acceptance of homosexuality or LGBT values 
within the conservative movement, which is to say you're not allowed to question the erosion of Christian values. And a lot of the questions are not saying, why aren't you anti-gay? They're just saying, why are you accepting LGBT and homosexual homosexuality in the conservative movement? That's supposed to be for the liberals. Why are you, why are you accepting it? Why do you think it's okay to advocate for gay marriage, for trans, for drag queens? Why is it okay for Charlie Kirk to be on stage at a supposedly conservative event to sway the, the minds of young conservatives and he's on stage with a black man who's a gay man and I don't care about the fact that he's black but I wouldn't recognize homosexuality as a conservative value because it's not Christian because and it, yes obviously Christianity has been majorly cucked yes of course but that doesn't mean that it should be approved in Christianity you have to take a stand somewhere in other words you have to take a stand Ten years ago, I mean, Barack Obama did not support gay marriage in 2008, if I remember correctly. This acceptance is a very recent thing. So those are the three main things that these weasels have been avoiding. Groypers out there, keep doing what you're doing. You're doing a great job. I salute you. Just in conclusion, I've noticed that there haven't been any Groypers asking about why the free market is sacred. At least I haven't seen any of them asking that question so far. Perhaps I'm mistaken. But I do notice in the spiels that are given by people like Charlie Kirk and Ben Shapiro, they frequently extol the virtues of the free market. It's like one of their main talking points. I'm still consider myself a capitalist. I still think capitalism has a lot of benefits. And I've been pro free market in the past. Now I'm a bit more nuanced. I, I, I see that the free market of course, it generates a huge amount of economic growth, whereas full-out socialism is going to kill the economy. So at first glance, it does seem all right to celebrate the free market like Milton Friedman did. Now, the problem here is your priorities. Neocons, or fake conservatives, whatever you want to call them, put the free market on a sacred pedestal. Everything will just work out if we let everyone do what they want. But then the big corporations can do whatever they want. And they lobby for mass immigration. They encourage feminism. They encourage LGBT acceptance. They don't want a traditional patriarchal society rooted in the family. The big corporations want a collection of rootless individuals. Why? Because it means more taxpayers, more consumers, which means more profits for them. One final thought. A lot of people need to reconsider how great it is to celebrate freedom. Like we are a free nation founded on freedom. Like hold on just a second there. Some freedoms are good, others not so much. Freedom from tyranny, from a king? Well, I'm not even sure if that was such a good thing. I mean, we all embrace democracy in the West and that didn't stop the rise of a tyrannical deep state with ties to the banking elite. Democracy itself, was a bad idea. So freedom is not necessarily so good. And then we have freedom to get divorces, freedom to have abortions, freedom to have a gay marriage. None of these freedoms have turned out so well for the conservative values and conservative culture. Now, of course, there are good freedoms. I mean, yes, I believe free economic enterprise has its benefits. So does freedom to own firearms. The list of pros and cons goes on and on. But for goodness sakes, celebrating freedom itself as sacred, this is just a liberal thing to do. So we've all been infected by liberalism and we can't think straight. So remember this the next time you hear this rat, Shapiro, talking about how America is founded on freedom or how Charlie Kirk thinks it's great to have the freedom to be gay and, conser and be a conservative. Because when you're caught in that line of thinking, we can't really tell people what they can and cannot do, and you can't conserve anything in the end. Hasta luego, amigos.